What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself. In this video, I'll be reacting to the highlights from the NCAA 2023 Men's Volleyball Championship match between University of Hawaii and UCLA. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who makes inspirational and educational volleyball and jump training content so you can take your performance to the next level. Now, some quick background about both teams. University of Hawaii has been on a rise over the last five or six years, winning back-to-back -back championships in 2021 and 2022 and making a finals appearance before that. UCLA is currently coached by John Sparrow, who's a world-famous coach for the USA men's national team who won multiple championships at UC Irvine and has made the NCAA finals and semifinals multiple times but hasn't been able to walk away with a championship. So this should be a very exciting match between these two volleyball powerhouses. One thing I love about the Hawaii team is they clap before the serve. I think that's the lefty setter. One-handed set, ooh, with a one-handed block. Now, one thing to realize about very tight sets when the setter is jumping with one hand is that if their elbow is locked, they have to go to the middle. So as a middle blocker, if I see the elbow locked, it's very difficult for them to push it out. So they're usually going to set the middle because all they can do is tap the ball. So that's when you can fully commit to the middle. Now, the Hawaii middle does an excellent job of not fully committing, but also reading with this left hand and diving in. So committing with this body, but then still reading where the hitter's going to hit with this left hand. Ooh, fake play. Made famous by Japan. And that was an amazing, quick, big transition. Man, this is action-packed here. So the outside hitter does a really great job faking the hit, drawing one blocker and the middle away. So no blocker to the setter. Outside hitter's late, but the libero does a great job dropping his shoulder, angling the pass back to the center. Now one thing that the middle is doing such a good job of is transitioning. Sometimes middle just gets stuck in the middle of the court watching and they end up blocking the setter from getting the ball and end up sending a free ball over. But here, UCLA, everyone's doing their job. You look at that, all three hitters loading, setter releasing. And when you run the BIC, usually you don't run it to a specific spot. Usually you run it based on the middle's pattern. So the middle is committing with pretty good spacing to the setter here and then the outside hitter is just running it just over the left shoulder of the middle so even if it was translated to the right they should keep that same spacing here who almost runs into him and that middle makes a good read but that's just so much space opening up here now why is there a single block because the setter does a great job being neutral so when you're neutral, your body's upright, it's really difficult to see who he's going to set here. So this outside hitter still has to stay with the right front hit, um, hitter. So this is near a perfect pass because you got all three options. Selling that and then giving 101 for the big, lots of space to hit in the open to the right. Look at that engagement from the teammates on the bench. Oh, line bounce. That is a short, sharp serve. Great one-handed set. And that's the nice thing about having a six foot seven setter from Hawaii. So this is a great cut shot serve. The server's facing forward. And so you have all these passers lined up with him and he just cuts it super short. And this is rotation one. And this is a great place to serve because the outside hitter is currently right front and the setter has to release from behind him. And so there's a lot of traffic in this area. So we'll see it again here. See how the setter has to release. So lots of traffic here. And if you serve it short, not only do you interrupt the path of the setter, you take out this hitter. So now Hawaii only has to worry about three hitters, the middle, the big, and the opposite hitter who's hitting from the left side. So great short serve from this outside hitter from Hawaii. Now the elbow is slightly bent. So most likely he's going to set and load for the outside because when the elbow's locked, they're preparing for the quick set like we just talked about in the previous play or they're forced to set the middle because the ball is just too high and too tight. But here when they load the elbow, usually they're getting ready to push it out. So let's see if the Hawaii middle makes that read. 
So that's good. He doesn't commit to the middle. He's already released. Oh, he, he does get faked there, but a quick shuffle recovery and a good dive in move from the setter from Hawaii there. Even though the setter from Hawaii got the block, the middle still does a great job partially committing to the middle. See how he kind of loads to try to get ready for the middle, but then he quickly recovers and shuffles to try to close the block there. That's a pretty good set and almost got the cover from UCLA. It's a medium jump serve, but easy put away. Got to serve a little tougher than that because that's a three point pass with UCLA easy easy side out percentage there. Another shortcut diving to the left. Ooh, miscommunication. That is rare. And the Hawaii athlete did such a good job chasing that ball. This is where chemistry really takes place here. So let's take a look at what the middle is doing to still put this ball away, even though the pass was a little further off the net. All right, so good free ball transition. See how the libero is taking the ball. All three hitters are loaded. Now this pass wasn't that great of a free ball pass because it's, it's on like the six foot line. In a free ball situation, you want to get it all the way to the net just to make it easier for the setter to set along the net. Also, it gives the blockers less time to react because when the further off the, the pass is, the longer it takes for the hitter to actually get to the ball. So the middle does a great job staying behind the setter. Now, every system is different in terms of if it's five feet off, do you spot set, meaning does the middle go all the way to the net and it's the setter's job to set in front of him? Or do you stay with consistent spacing behind the setter? Most high level teams at the professional and collegiate level, up until the seven or eight foot line even, the middle stays behind the setter. Now, if the set is all the way to the three meter line, then the middle should run the shoot to keep that open spacing. And it's just an easier ball to hit. That's not gonna come over your shoulder. So see how his feet are jumping behind the setter. And the setter does lead the middle just a little bit because he sees that he's jumping forward, puts it in that bread basket. Look at that line up perfectly against his right shoulder. And this is a very deceptive set because he's pulled off. There is a lower probability that he's gonna set the middle but he sees the UCLA middle not committing with him and it gets a free swing. See how the middle is not in a full commit situation. He's in a read block situation. He's reacting to the middle, not fully committing. See how he's already fully committed to the hit and the UCLA middle is still on the ground. That's why he's unable to stop it. Another free ball situation. Ooh, pass off the net again. And that should be an automatic put away with a much better pass so that's a great example of what happens when you don't pass the ball all the way to the net you just make it more difficult to side out here so similar free ball situation libero does a good job taking it all the way to the right but you see how now the setter has to come off so you do end up messing the setter's rhythm a little bit so they know the middle option is not going to be high probability Kind of one and a half blocks, giving the defense more time to set up. Good dig. A little bit closer to the net, but now it's a much better distance. Man, look at that fake out on that one-on-one. -on -one. So the UCLA middle is now running a three, pulling this middle, and that setter from UCLA sees that middle commit to the right, giving another one-on-one -on -one situation here, sending him closer to the net so he's able to hit a little bit more of a downward angle there. Want to learn how to jump higher so you can dominate your opponent at the net? Then use my Elevate Jump Training programs, which includes a 12-week bodyweight program that uses bodyweight-only exercises so you can train at home, a four-week starter program for those who are new to weight training and plyometrics, and the Elevation Template, which is my 12-month program that comes with over 100 exercise tutorial videos, a mobile training app so you can train anywhere at any time, and detailed monthly workouts. Use my discount code and link below to get 5% off your program and start jumping higher today. So first set, USA takes it up just by two points. Wow, that was a crazy cover. What the heck happened there? Okay, I thought the middle hit it. So the middle runs the back one, but doesn't get set. But it goes for a nice tip down the line. And that's tough because the setter touched it or the opposite touched it from Hawaii. Definitely could have gone that up. He probably wants to take that one back. 
Great transition from the back one. Let's look at the transition footwork for Hawaii. I think this middle is from Greece and this guy's a monster. So first he does a great soft block. So great out of system set, soft block from the middle. You see how their hands are finished over the net before the block gets to them. Great off block pass. Off blocker means the person who's not blocking. And then he gets that free ball pass. And the setter takes a big approach. Now let's see what the middle's doing. So let's track his movements. As soon as he lands, the main goal is you got to see where your setters come from. Do not block the setter, even if it means taking yourself out of the play. So here's a great route from the middle. He kind of takes a circular route, goes around the middle. Now, if he didn't have to roll out of the block, he could have transitioned here for a one or a three. But because he kind of spun out of the block, which is a really good safe blocking technique. He ended up making a full circle and they probably have a system where he just has to call it and call the back one and the setter knows he's going to be there. Easy put away catching the UCLA middle off guard. That's just a tough ball to block. Great pass from UCLA and a hang and bang. That looked like a push one. Wish they would show some replays from the side angle. Whoa, ho, ho, huge stuff block from UCLA there. Maybe a diving angle. I think he gave that one away a little bit. So pretty good pass from the libero all the way to the net. And what's interesting is you see the setter from Hawaii load huge. Now he's left-handed, so you do want him to have that onto option. Probably not the best time to do it as he's running forward because if the blockers are following you, that means they're bunching closer. That means the pass is leading you towards a greater concentration of passers here. Now, hypothetically, the setter could set a D-ball. But in this situation, when he's max jumping, and see how his elbow's back? So that's how you know he's going to dump. Unless he does a fake, like does his elbow back in the sets, which is really deceptive. He pulls his elbow back, so now you have the outside hitter and the middle bunched into the middle zone to help with that block there. But still great to test it out and see if it works because UCLA is up 21. So might as well try something. Great serve in that seam. That is the best place to serve is in between two passers. Make a move laterally and miscommunicate there. Ooh, another hang and bang, but miss opportunity. This middle, he's a little bit undersized. I think he's only like 6'6". This guy's an athlete. D-ball transition. Is that a dig from the outside? Yes, it is. Free ball, can they pass it to the net? Yes, they can. It should be easy put away. That was a huge transition point, 23-23. I want you to see, we talk so much about passing free balls perfectly. This is not the same as everything should be perfect. A free ball, that's why we call it a free ball because it's the easiest opportunity you're gonna get to pass the ball. So you do have to pass it maybe up to three feet off the net, kind of in that window, but get the setter on the net so they can dump as an option. But the ball does get to the hitters a little bit faster when it's close to the net. When it's off the net, it takes a little bit longer to get to the net, which gives the blockers a little bit more time if you draw the angles there. So good transition opportunity right on the money here. Big penultimate step from the middle. Let's see what the middle does. So the middle is on a react block. So that's why the momentum kind of goes up and off the block because the blockers getting on the way up instead of at the top. And that's tough to do on a perfect pass. If you have a good setter, then they end up being very deceptive where it's hard to read who they're gonna get set. So the middle ends up waiting and this is a size matchup where the middle from UCLA, which I think is 6'8", six, 6'9", six, so a little bit of a size advantage, a reach advantage, but because the middle is up right before the setter touches the ball, he's able to beat the block with speed and timing. And not the best setting connection. He had a little bit of a straight arm swing, but because he's up early, he beats the block. Short tip. Oh. Got to pass that one a little better because then you're going to miss those opportunities. But high, deep corner, that's the best place to hit. Hard, deep corner out of system. Look at this. Open, over the top. Great swing. He bailed that opposite pass. Sneaking it under the block. Looks like the middle blocker didn't finish the block in time. Oh, one hand save from the middle black. 
Good transition from that middle. Man, I'm telling you, this middle from Hawaii. Let's look at his route here. So in this situation, out of system, triple block, well formed. Good read from the middle black. In this one, you don't want to dig most spikes to the net. Only in free ball or down ball or serve receive situations. When you're digging, you want to dig somewhere between the 10, 5 to 10 foot line to give yourself some room for error in case you happen to pass it too tight because you know people are hitting the ball pretty hard. But it also gives everyone space to load and move around on the court. If you pass it too tight, it, you know the setter might be loading from the right back, so that's a much harder route to take as you're trying to play defense. Like imagine if the right back was a setter to have to run all the way here, so you make the distance a little shorter for the setter. And also in this situation where the setter is right front, if you pass it along the net, you're having to run into people, whereas if you pass it off, you're giving the setter more space because all the hitters are going to be loading back there. So here he passes it. I'm sure he's not doing this intentionally because they train this you know, at pretty high levels. Oh, but he saves that one-hand dig, and that's one thing that this middle back player from UCLA does is he sees that the ball's too tight, and you see how you have two people running toward the middle, they're reading the middle, to try to redeem the overpass. Now in the middle, probably should have just turned it left or right. Most defenders aren't gonna line up with your body when trying to read and dig an overpass. So if he just turned his wrist, probably would have gotten an easy kill to his left. Instead, he digs straight ahead to the middle back defender. And I would have hit this again. Yeah, he, put, he probably should have smacked that one. Okay, so the, the middle is just ready for that two-step approach. And he runs to shoot for an easy transition kill. So let's look at the middle blocker transition footwork. So the middle just hits, he sees that the ball is an overpass, so you see how he's already taking his route. And usually it's kind of like a curved route. And maybe in transition, they have a system where he runs threes in transition. So he shuffles to a spot, and he just takes a powerful two-step approach. And the setter's released there, he's established his approach. Up even before the set super early beating the block again you see how they have to block on the way up because the middles are up so early so middles don't move faster just go earlier 28 27 hawaii this is a tight second set oh left-handed save great reach from the ucla middle he set him a little too tight and high but save that one Wow, he's, let's see that blocking move. This is a great technical view. Okay, so you see how the middle is already starting right. So on the scattering report, you usually know who the main hitters are and you know pretty much what they tend to run in certain rotations or certain situations. So it looks like they're in rotation six or some rotation five for the setters right front. So you see how two of the hitters are stacked right, or actually three of the hitters, including the BIC and their D ball, they only have one hitter over here. So my guess is that the scouting report shows that they're usually gonna go to any of these three, probably the outside. And so that's why you want two hitters to stack to the right. Stack just means kind of move together to the right to prioritize those hitters. And they're okay leaving their opposite one-on-one. -on -one. And this simple move, instead of starting in the middle, this simple move gives them a head start to close because this is a fast set. Look at that, he's not even worried about the middle. So maybe on the scattering report, they don't set this guy a lot in transition. They maybe stay with Bic or outside. So this gives them a two quick step approach to close. Oh, he gets it right with that left hand, finishing the block on his way up and gets there just in time. So scattering reports are really important. You gotta know patterns, who's gonna set what or who's gonna hit where in certain rotations. Skim off the net. Uh-oh, middle's on the ground. Solo block, but can't finish it. That's an unlucky play or a very smart hit from Hawaii. Wow, Hawaii now wins the second set. This is so close. The first two sets were only a difference. We're already both in overtime. Easy put away from the back row. Wow, out of system, still hits into the hands, gets a seam kill. So out of system, aim high into the hands. That's a great spot. That's a good recycle from Hawaii. A little bit off the net. So this is a great move from the Alsa hitter. It's a little bit tight on the set, and they have a well-formed triple block. Actually, it's not super tight. I think he sees that there's a big triple block, 
And so he kind of hits it softly into the hands to recycle. Great coverage from Hawaii. So good recycle opportunity. This is a great choice from the Hawaii setter. From a triple block, the outside hitter has to work really hard to stop his momentum from the landing, from drifting to the right, and then reset all the way to left front. So I think this is a great choice from Hawaii because now he's able to isolate his hitter to get him one blocker up. The tough part is he gets him too far off the net. So we have a back row hitter from the right back. And usually for the D ball, which is a back row right side, you want to get them close to the five foot line because they have so much space to broad jump that you want to get them as close to the net. And that's what this hitter is probably anticipating is he's fully committed to that hard broad jumping approach. Now, unfortunately, the setter, see how the middle doesn't really reset. And so he's with one blocker up. So he does set over the shoulder, but he sets him right on the 10 foot line. And unfortunately, what that does is it stops the momentum of the hitter and you see how the hitter has to look up at the ball instead of forward at the block so when you set your hitters too far off the net you not only do you decelerate them so you you decrease their jumping ability and power because you're stopping the momentum but you also decrease their vision because now they're under the ball having to look up instead of looking forward at the ball and the block so you kind of see how he has to kind of awkwardly lean and the blocker gets an easy stuff block there one-on-one -on -one with a stuff put away. That is rare on one-on-one -on -one situations, but this is a tall setter. And another stuff block. Man, this is just a block fest here. Great pass from LA. And a seam block to the opposite hitter. You say wins that one by four points. This is just wall after wall after wall. Now notice that all their blocks, we'll talk about the blocks a little bit because they've been so many blocks in these replays here. So the two key things you wanna think about for blocking is make sure your block is finished or finishing right at the moment of contact. You don't wanna be forming your block if you can help it because sometimes the sets are too fast or sometimes you get faked out. But you wanna to try to finish that and then also you wanna turn your hands toward area six. Area six is in the middle of the court. So when you finish, you wanna have your hands completely over at the point of contact or before and have your hands turn the ball back to the court. Cause you see how these blocks are just going back and this prevents from getting until you see how they kind of turn their hands inward. And every point is neck to neck over the top. This UCLA middle jumps super high and he's hitting over an even bigger, oh, great dig and even bigger Hawaii middle. One-on-one, -on -one, but looks like a little too tight on that set. Down the line, oh! Smart hit from Hawaii. Just couldn't dig that one. Wow, that was fast. Okay, this is what is definitely happening at the higher levels. When the ball is pushed to the left, instead of just setting a high ball, assuming the setter can get their feet there, they run what we call close tempo. So you see how it's almost as fast as the middle. Now, why not just set it high in the same location? You wanna to try to beat the block a little bit more because if this is not, this is a, a pretty good pass at this level, but it's not a perfect pass. It's, you want things to be centered to kind of spread the block out, but the setter has to move forward. And so it's right at, it's like a big tempo. So it's just fast enough to where the middle is late and you get like a free seam there. So that's one thing that's been really cool to watch is if the ball is passed left or right, they set the outside hitter or the right side hitter even faster to try to compensate for the less than accurate pass. 20 to 16, UCLA is up two sets to one. Heavy topspin serve with an ace, wow. That's a heavy arm serve, super flat, not a lot of topspin and lots of heat. That's that close tempo set again but the outside hitter reads that. In this out of system situation, as a middle, you have to make educated guesses. The two hitters that are available, you see how the pass is too far off and too far to the left for the middle to be involved. So now you only have to work on focusing blocking two hitters because the middle is out. So now you've reduced the hitting options to just the outside hitter and the D ball. Now over the match, I'm assuming the outside hitters are a little bit more terminal. And so the Hawaii middle, already starts his block to the right. You see how they're all bunched to the right because it doesn't look like the UCLA opposite is as big of a threat as the outside. So their bunch blocking system has seemed to be stacking right a lot. And that guess pays off because they immediately can full commit to the outside hitter, which is a huge wall to hit against there. 
So the scouting report and reading the situation before the setter sets is so critical. Don't just go on the court reacting to everything. You wanna have a plan, you wanna make educated reads and guesses. And sometimes you're gonna be wrong, which is okay, but you have to take those chances there. Another ace, nope, safe from UCLA. Free ball. Oh, too tight. That was critical. Was that on championship point? Holy cow, we gotta watch that again. So 21-24, tough serve, great clutch serve from Hawaii. Free ball situation. This is our chance to, to go 20-24. That is tough to lose it on a tight free ball. Wow, that is a tough way to lose a game on a free ball shank pass. And I think UCLA or U of H has to have a challenge. Nope. So the rule for, even if the setter is front row, any part of the ball that is over the net, the hitter can touch. So even if it's just like a, a centimeter over the net, and that's kind of a judgment call from the ref, that's a little bit over, you can attack the ball and touch it, even if the setter's trying to set it. I know a lot of players make the argument of, well, the setter's trying to set it, but if any part of the ball is past the plane of the net, take a whack at it, like hit into the setter's hands if you have to, especially if the setter's back row, because then they could get called for a back row attack. I love watching celebrations. I'm getting goosebumps, just feel like being there, and I just feel so happy for the champions, but sad for U of H at the same time, because they work so hard during this match. Even though that was only the highlights, that was very, very, very exciting. More exciting than a typical highlight video. The energy of every point, I mean, this felt like the championship energy that is required to win at this level, and it was neck to neck, so many close, sets that went beyond 25 points. Now, I'm a huge fan of the U of H program and Charlie Wade because his coaching philosophy is that he gives everyone an opportunity to earn starting time and playing time if you're willing to put in the work and if you're willing to execute at a certain level. He doesn't seem to box people into these roles. Definitely a fan of that coaching philosophy and the program that he's built in the last five to six years. But I'm also a huge fan of John Sparrall and I've been rooting for him for so long ever since he went from UC Irvine where he was dominating the men's volleyball scene. And when he went to UCLA, took some time to reestablish the cultures and the habits of that program. And he came so close so many times. So I'm really happy for him because for great coaches, you just wish good things. And I just felt like him and his team deserve to win for so many years and they just fell short every time. And I'm sure this has been a huge monkey off his back. So congratulations to coach John Sparrow and the UCLA men's volleyball team. I'm sure this is gonna be many more championships to come. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my other video where I break down the women's NCAA playoff match from Stanford.